Okay, very first shot. So let's see how 9mm feels in this Rock Island Armory revolver. I'm going to start out single action. See where the sights are. Looks like they're pretty on. Trigger feels great in single action. I like this hammer too. Okay, single action shoots nice and the trigger feels good. Let's try double action. Looks like the sights are pretty well on too. Nice, very nice. I almost did better double action than I did single action. Ain't that weird? So something new for 2020, Rock Island Armory is importing revolvers from Alpha Proj in the Czech Republic for Rock Island branding and sale here in the United States. I was interested when I saw the information, but I was especially interested when I saw that one of these models was going to be chambered in 9mm. I asked for an advanced copy to test and review, and Rock Island Armory was kind enough to loan me this model AL 9.0 9mm 6-shot revolver. And while the MSRP information is not yet known, I would guess that this gun will be priced very competitive with other budget-friendly marketplace favorites. Notice I didn't say cheap, because I think there are a number of lower-priced but very good quality wheel guns available for consumers. And after spending some quality time with this 9mm 6 gun at the range, I can't think of any that are better. If a 9mm wheel gun isn't your thing, there are also two new models in 357 Magnum, one very similar to this gun and one in a snub nose variety. But this review will focus entirely on this 9mm version, which is dubbed the AL 9.0. I shot hundreds of rounds through this gun over several range trips, and its performance was excellent. The only problem I had was on one particular day, uh, after doing a lot of shooting, I started having trouble getting the ammo to fully seat into the chambers. I found myself having to sort of push it down in. I figured the gun was just getting really dirty and those cylinders probably needed a good bore cleaning. Of course they did need cleaning, but what I found when I got in there was that there was a piece of copper shaving stuck down underneath the ejector. Once that was cleared out, it was right back to functioning perfectly and never had any more problems. I did shoot some groups with the AL-9, but from a distance of 10 yards and just standing flat foot at the range shooting offhand. The results were very consistent and very impressive. All right, just for fun, let's see what kind of groups I can put on paper. 10 yards away from that target, I've got six bullseyes on that target, so I might as well shoot six different kinds of ammo. And I'm going to start out with the ammo that Arms Corps provided me. Arms Corps 9mm 115 grain ball.
Okay. Okay, remember kids, this is offhand shooting at 10 yards, so don't judge the gun or the ammo necessarily by what you see here. Okay, next up is Remington UMC. Upper middle class ammo. I don't pretend that I'm some sort of, uh, you know, fantastic shot or an amazing marksman or anything. So if I can produce groups really good with a gun, it's just a testament to how well that gun shoots, how well I can shoot it. And it makes me look good. I'll spare you having to watch me shoot six entire groups in real time. So let's zip through the hits. But as you can see, many bullets shared a single hole and all of the groups were very good. I give a lot of credit to the great sights for letting me stay on target for 36 consecutive shots. And here's a look at the results for those of you who like statistics and scores. I measured the trigger pull at 11 pounds 10 ounces for the double action, which is right in the range, on the, actually on the low end of the range that the RIA quotes. And the single action pull I measured at 4 pounds and 2 ounces. Very light and very nice to shoot. Everything about this Checkmade revolver says quality. The feel of the steel and the materials are solid, very well assembled. Everything is nice and tight. The bluing is a deep black, as I had mentioned, and it seems like it's going to be very durable. The rubber grips are solid and firm, unlike a lot of other rubber grips. You don't feel your fingers compressing the material, no matter how hard you squeeze but it provides a very solid grip and softens every shot. Recoil overall is basically nothing with this revolver, even shooting the hot self-defense loads. Like I said, it's about the size of a K-frame, maybe a little bit smaller, but for comparison, so folks with smaller hands will appreciate the smaller size of this revolver. Of course, in double action, the trigger stroke is long, but it's very smooth and very even. I wasn't noticing any stacking and I found it easy to roll through the trigger pull and stay right on target. The trigger feels much better than the 11.5 pound measurement suggests. And I like the hammer spur even though at first I didn't think I would. It seemed a little bit narrow, but it's nicely knurled and very well positioned for the thumb when cocking each shot for single action shooting. Hammer spur just seems Nicely placed, very easy to handle. And it's got that long spur too, so you can just really, <laughs> really get a hold of it. The action of the gun is definitely much more Smith & Wesson-like than anything else. You can see it has a Smith & Wesson style cylinder release. It has a Smith & Wesson direction of counterclockwise rotation. And in general, it just sort of has that feel. However, there are some significant and noticeable differences in the way it's made. There are some differences between this gun and most of the other ones we're familiar with, even though many of the operational aspects and manufacturing aspects are very familiar. The ejector rod is a little bit differently made. It's got some uh, some play in it, so it doesn't necess It's not it's not solid and fixed. You can spin this forward part of the rod without turning the cylinder. And the star, if we can still call it that, is really more of a nub. But because this gun is made to shoot only nine millimeter and only with moon clips, that's really all you need. So that's just a matter of being efficient and not putting extra material out there that's not needed. The cylinder is counterboard, as you can see here, and the moon clip and the case heads all sit flush to the back of the cylinder when it's loaded. 
lockup is very respectable, very, very tight. And the distance between the cylinder and the forcing cone is also a very respectable, tight distance. I've been impressed by the accuracy of this little revolver, very much so. I've been equally impressed by the quality of the gun and the smooth operation. Over the years I've come to understand that Rock Island Armory puts its name on quality guns, affordably priced, but this model AL-9 exceeded my expectations even for that. This revolver is on par with all the best names out there, so even though I don't know what the MSRP is going to ultimately be, I have an idea what ballpark it'll be in, and based on that, Based on the quality of this gun and just the shootability, how much fun it is to shoot, how well it shoots, how well it's made, this could be one of the best bargains of 2020. All right, let's try to shoot and tree again, double action. You got uh, six targets and six bullets. That kind of works out good, <laughs> unless I miss which is likely. See? <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Doesn't like that direction, does it? Boy, if you don't hit them square, they don't flip. Okay, I'm not going to read the spec sheet to you. I'll put it up here on the screen and you can look at it for yourself. Some of the key numbers, though, are worth going over. Gun weighs just about exactly a pound and a half empty. Six and three quarter inches long, and it only stands four inches tall. So it's about the size, roughly, of a K-frame Smith, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Barrel's four inches long. The barrel is inserted into a shroud, and that is nicely equipped with a full underlug protecting the ejector rod. You can see the range of trigger pull that they list here for double action and single action. Talk in a minute about what I measured on my gauge. The gun is nicely blued. It's actually a very black finish, but it seems to be very durable. Looks like it would hold up really well. Has a really nice set of sights on it. This one of my favorite features on this revolver are the sights. The rear sight is adjustable for both windage and elevation. You can see the adjustment screws there. It's nicely serrated for anti-glare with a matching serration on the front of the barrel and that front sight. Look at the size of that blade, <laughs> but it sticks up there really nice. Got that beautiful nice bright orange insert and that gives you a fantastic sight picture. I really like the sight picture a lot. The back of the rear sight is serrated for anti-glare. And the notch and blade fit are just about perfect. I rarely shoot hand loads in any kind of a gun review unless I feel it's relevant to the conversation. And in this case, I think it is relevant to the conversation. So I'm going to shoot just a couple of clips of my hand loads, my 9mm hand loads. These are 124 grain and they're, you know, low power, but power factor qualified. Because this is a revolver, we don't have to worry about whether they're going to work the action or not. So what I'm really testing here is just to make sure that they fit properly and function properly with the moon clips in the cylinder. They don't bind uh, or anything like that. So, well, they dropped right in very nicely. 
uh, better than some of the factory ammo that I've shot. It's very, uh, you can see, very, very free fitting, which is good. And we'll see how the case expansion is and, uh, and how they eject. And moon clip number two, same ammo. Okay, testing now steel cased ammo just to see how it functions in the revolver. Make sure the fit is good and make sure it, uh, it handles it well and ejects the case is good and all that. So it also fits pretty good. And this is not good quality steel cased ammo. Even by steel cased ammo standards, this is bottom of the barrel. This is like stuff that was salvaged from the Titanic. So <laughs> if it'll shoot this, it'll shoot anything. Okay, so it's not as easy to, uh, to eject. It's, it's a bit tight here, and I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on the ejector rod, but there we go. So it took a bit of a tap to get that out. So you can see that steel cased, and again, this is bad quality steel cased, like no lubrication on that steel. Um, so just that little bit of expansion, and then the fact that you've got steel, which has no natural lubricity, along with it not being lubricated, made it a little bit sticky to get out, but not really a problem. And I've got another moon clip loaded up with the steel, so let's go ahead and do that again. It's hard to be really accurate when there's a bee buzzing around your head. But you notice how I retained my composure. That's because I am a trained professional. Yeah, the steel case is uh, definitely, definitely a little harder to get out. So I wouldn't shoot a whole lot of steel cased. Well, I wouldn't shoot a whole lot of this steel cased in any gun, really. But uh, made for a good test. So now we know. So I'll tell you while I'm shooting these, the sight picture is excellent. Which is probably one reason why I can make these respectable groups. The AL-9 will ship with two moon clips, which are very nice quality moon clips. I loaded them and unloaded them a whole bunch of times and they performed perfectly. They will also supply this loader unloader tool. It's really more of an unloader tool uh, and it works actually pretty nicely. It's pretty nifty. That will also come with the revolver and you notice I'm speaking in future tense and that is because this revolver is not yet available. It will be on the market in January so be looking for it right around if not before SHOT Show keep your eyes open and you might even want to give your dealer a heads up as far as spare parts I don't know the I don't know the specs on these moon clips and I'm gonna to try to find out you know what might be available that would be compatible eventually you'll be able to go to advancedtactical.com which is RIA's website for parts and supplies and you'll be able to buy them there I don't think they're going to be available just yet. So it may take a while before you can readily get moon clips and that's sort of the only downside to it but otherwise I got nothing bad to say. Nothing bad to say at all.
and that just feels nice. The more I shoot it, the more I like it.